Hey there kids, I'm going to try to zip through this lesson quickly. This is module one, lesson eight, and it kind of piggybacks on lesson seven where we're rounding a given decimal to any place value position using place value understanding and this super fun vertical number line and that sarcasm right there because I dislike strongly the vertical number line. Anyway, let's use it. Uh, a couple of examples in the teacher's edition, 49 and 67 hundredths, they talk about renaming. I say put the squeeze on the number so that you can call it the place value position to which you are rounding. For example, if I'm rounding to the nearest tens, then I'm just going to leave it at four tens. I can't put the squeeze on it because there's nothing to squeeze. Um, but if you're rounding something like this one, and of course, if you don't have these notes, it sure is helpful if you would copy them. Um, if you're rounding a number like 9 and 949 thousandths to two different place value positions, then we've got the tenths and the hundredths, which are identified here with the rounding place value position here, and I put a box around it to let you know, hey, it's the rounding place and the helping number. Box the rounding place and the helping number. 94 will round to 90, 49 will round to 50. So this is um, the quick old-fashioned way of rounding so much easier but anyway we'll do it with the vertical number line that is going to ask you to put the renamed number on the bottom plus one on the top and the halfway or midpoint which you can do in a couple of sprints I think in less than seven sprints in the practice book find the midpoint which means go to the next position to the right find the five always have that five and that's your midpoint always five Okay, so a couple examples, nine and, uh, 949 thousandths, if I'm rounding to the nearest tenths, if I have 99 tenths, then plus one would be 100 tenths. The five would be the 9.95, five in the hundredths place, and then our actual number is 9.94. So you plot that on the number line, see that it's below the midpoint, and it goes down. Here, if I have my 9.949, and my midpoint is 9.945 if I'm rounding to the hundredths place, 994 hundredths would be the low. The high plus one is 995 hundredths, and then our actual number is 9.949. So 49 is just before 50, therefore it would round up. Don't forget to circle your rounded answer. Then the last tricky thing, and it really is tested and it's very important that you get this, is that they'll ask you about a maximum possible value and a minimum possible value. And so I, it, it's hard to really say, I mean, I can show you specifically, but you can take any number and say, all right, listen, those tens in between, if I'm counting by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and so on, any 10 can be that first number that you're taking off from. This is one, two, three, four, and the midpoint always has five. What they're saying is, what's the maximum possible value to round to this 10? Well, it's going to end with a 4. Whatever it is, 4 would be at the end of your maximum possible value. Okay, If it's a 5, it's going to be rounded up. So the maximum possible will end with a 4 and it would go down. Okay, And then this is like the continued, or this would be the same number here. So that if I'm talking about, say, a 54, okay, well, a 54 would round to 50. And if this is my 50, then it could be 45 at the bottom. So I hope you guys see that any number with a 5 is going to get rounded up to that next 10. And any number with a 4 at the end is going to get rounded down to the lower 10. I hope this is helpful, okay? Another example would be like 94. And... You look at the 4, the 4 will take you down to the 90, or 85 would take you up to the 90. So the maximum possible and the minimum possible. And I know these are on the tests, so please try to understand that. Practice with a whole bunch of random numbers and apply this strategy. Now, hopping into the book, we have to actually make a few of these vertical number lines uh, so that you guys can practice. So here's our number. We're going to round it to the nearest tenth, hundredth, and one. Three vertical number lines. Okay. 
tenth, hundredth, and one. Tenth, hundredth, and one. I like to rewrite the numbers when I'm working with them so I can box the place value position and the helping number. Tenth, right here, okay? So 69, you can see, is very close to 70. Hundredth, uh, let's write it right here. And that's here, so it's gonna be 97 in the box. And one, that's this place. So it would be this and the helping number right there. Okay, now let's dress up these number lines with the bottom, the middle, and the top. Bottom, middle, top. Top, middle, bottom, mix it up, doesn't matter. Okay, so if I'm looking for the nearest tenth, now we're gonna stick with just this number line. If I was to put the squeeze on or rename this number to the nearest tenth, I would have 326 tenths. Now in standard form, Again, I've got that decimal, so you can put 32.6, okay? How many tenths is a plus one? 327, which is actually 32.7, okay? So the halfway is then the next place value position, five. So it's gonna be 32.65. So how do I know that? Because it'd be 60, 65, 70. Now, where does my number actually fit on here? 32.697. Well, 32.69. It's going to be up here. 32.697. Seven. Seven's kind of irrelevant at that point because we're counting these tenths and hundredths. 65, 69, 70. So where will this round? It will round up, and that's your final answer. So circle it. Make sure you circle it. Next one, if I'm rounding to the nearest hundredths, how many hundredths do I have? 32.69. You can put a zero here because that's going to help us. 32.70. 69 plus 1 is 70. And then the halfway would be 32.695. So if I have 690, 695, and then 700, where does my number fall? It falls right here. 695, 696, 697. So when it's above, remember the five being the lowest point to round up, this is my rounded answer. Next one. Uh, I'm rounding to the nearest ones place, so I have 32 ones or 33 ones. And so my Literally, 32.5 is going to be my midpoint, and I have 0.6, and so we would round that up to 33. Okay, let's do another one. This is a big guy, and we have to round it to four different places, so we're going to have to squeeze our work in. All right, make those number lines, dress them up. Top, middle, bottom, we need the midpoint, we need the bottom value, and we need the plus one. And so if I have this one, okay, don't get tricked here. Tenth is going to be 141.999. This is tenths, so it's 99. I think we're going to have a lot of the same answers because there's really going to be one way for 99 to go. And then this one, 99, so it's going to be a lot of plus one, right? Um, so if I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, that'd be 141.90, 141.99, 141.99, 1, and then if I add 1, what am I going to get? 142, okay, because if I plus 1, 90, 95, 100, so instead of having the 9 still, it bumps over into the 1's place, so that would give us 142. So I have 141.99, and that's right here. So that rounds up to 142. If we talk about the hundredths place, and I have 141.99, and I'm rounding to here, nine. This is what's in the box. 
And again, I have 141.990, 141.995, and plus one. So if I was to plus one in the hundredths place, nine plus one is 10, which bumps it over to here. Nine plus one is 10, which bumps it over to here. So I'm stuck with 142 again at the top. And when I place my number here, 141.999, okay, it rounds up to 142 as well. Let's look at the nearest 10, because now we're shifting it over a little bit to the left, where I have a, some, what I say, better numbers to work with, 141.999. But this is to the nearest 10. Okay, that's the tens place. So box that, and you're, you've got 41 in the box. So how many tens do I have? 14 tens, 15 tens. So that's really 140. This is really 150. So in the middle, you'd have, with the ones place, 45. Or 145 keep it all together. And um, plot your 141, which uh, would be right here. 141, 142, 143, 144, 145. So since it's right here, we're going to round down, and it would be 140. And the last one, hundreds, no THS. So be careful, 141.999, but this is way out here. So you either gonna, are going to have 100 or two hundreds, and we'll just leave that at the standard form, or 150 for the midpoint. But I have 141, okay, or 140 when I look at my helping value, so 140 and then I would round down. Don't forget to circle where your rounded answer is. Let's do another one. A root beer factory produces 132,554 cases in 100 days. About how many cases does the factory produce in one day? Round your answer. So first get the answer for one day, then round the answer to the nearest tenth and show your thinking on a number line. So we have to use a number line. So let's take our 132,554, and we've got this over 100 days, but if I want to take 1 100th of that, then I want to divide by 100, okay? You can also use 10 squared. It doesn't say we have to use an exponent, so I'm going to use 100. It's a shift of two place value positions to smaller place value positions. So I'm going to place my decimal two places to the left, one, three, two, five, five, four. And I'm gonna shift that and plop it right there, which gives me a number that's 100 times smaller, or one one hundredth of this. But now I need to round my answer to the nearest tenth of a case. Now if my nearest tenth is has a five in the rounding place and a four as my helping number, I know that I will, don't go changing my number. And can't touch this over here. Can't touch this. Oh, I got nothing but songs. Nothing but songs. So I'm gonna round this to 1,325 and 5 tenths cases per day. Um, cases per day. Now let's throw that on a number line. Bottom, middle, top. And so we've got uh, to the nearest tenth, we've got one, three, two, five, five. One, three, two, five, six. And if this is 50 and this is 60, one, three, two, five, 55, 50, 55, 60. And where are we? We are at here, 5, 4. Showing how it rounds down, and that's our rounded answer. 
Okay. Zipping along. Now this is that last one that talks about maximum and minimum values. A decimal number has two digits to the right of its decimal point. If we round it, this mystery number, mystery number with two digits to the right of its decimal point, if we round it to the nearest tenth, the result is 13.7. Okay, so two place value positions here, one here. This is the tenth. What is the maximum possible value of this number? Okay, when it's rounded to here, use words in the number line to explain your reasoning and include the midpoint. If this is going to be 13 and 70 hundredths and this is 13 and 80 hundredths, then the midpoint would be 13 and 75 hundredths. If I was at 13 and 75, I would go up. But anything below that would go down. So when rounded, this number is going to be 13 and 7 tenths, which means I can include everything from this point down. 13.73, 13.72, and 13.71, because those would all go down. The maximum number is 13 and 74 hundredths. Okay, so what is the minimum number? Let's use the number line that they gave us, but the minimum number then would be below that. So below 70, if I have the minus one, 60, and then the halfway, then I could round anything up from this point. So 1365 would round up, and so would 66, and so would 67, and so would 68, and so would 69. They would all go up. So the minimum would be 13 and 65 hundredths. And I so hope this has been helpful for you guys. Um, Click subscribe, come back again. I am trying to help everybody with this very difficult program and uh, hope to see you on the next video. Okay, so 13 and 65 hundredths is the minimum and there's your number line. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye.